right, welcome back my friends. This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Today, we're going to be painting up this Proline cliffhanger body that I'm going to be putting on a G-Speed chassis. So I've already got this thing masked out. Obviously it's been cut from the mold form. Comes something roughly like this. I use an X-Acto knife and I just scratch the surface where I want it to go and then I retrace that scratch three to five times with a razor blade until eventually you can actually just bend and it will snap. And you can see that the uh, piece of plastic in here is actually still a complete loop. And uh, using the X-Acto blade, you just trace along the bottom edge where you want. And eventually, you can snap the body out of it. Uh, I, had, I used to try and cut Lexan with scissors, and I didn't use Lexan scissors. I used, like, regular scissors. And uh, it really sucks. So I highly recommend using the old uh, X-Acto blade trick. Uh, here, I've got this thing uh, masked off a little bit. So... Let's talk about what we've got going on. White and black, red and orange, and yellow. This is not a licensed Toyota, but it looks like one. That's what Proline was going for, no doubt. So what I'm going to do is the classic Ivan Stewart Iron Man paint job on this Toyota pickup because I'm a Toyota fan and nothing screams 80s Toyota shitbox like a lovely Iron Man paint scheme, and I mean that in the most loving way possible, uh, obviously because I'm going to paint my truck like that. So what I've got in mind here, looking at some old pictures of his truck, uh, basically the red portion of the real truck, of the race truck, the red go, starts from about halfway under his extended cab window, and then it actually does the whole bedside and uh, the rear of the truck in solid red. And then you've got the stripes that move forward from there. And then I'm going to do the whole front of this truck in white. So what I did was masked off where I want the red to be for now. Uh, this drop bed section back here, I am going to paint black. So I'm going to go out in the garage, get that sprayed. Uh, this is not going to be like a, this is how you spray your paint. This is the temperature you should use. In fact, a lot of things I'm not doing uh, what you should be doing, but... I've done a few different paint schemes before and kind of just winged it and had fun and they come out how they come out. I'm definitely not an expert in this, but I'm going to share with you guys what I'm doing on this truck because this is definitely the most complicated paint job I've done with five different colors. Uh, so red back, black bed, white front. I don't know what I'm going to do with the grill. I might put some more stripes up front, but for now we're going to start with red, get the first light coating on there. I'm going to bring it back in here and we'll show you guys what we've got going on soon. All right, we stepped up our masking protection using a uh, plastic bag and a little more masking tape. I could tell you guys were concerned I didn't have enough masking on there, but uh, paint isn't going to be getting through that bag, which you can see overspray on that bag, so I'm definitely glad I did that. However, uh, yeah, if you can see here, very light first coat, still very transparent. You can see right through it. You can see my hand right through there. And uh, you definitely just want to continue doing light coats like this. This is going to take a long time, guys. Uh, and to be honest, it's actually pretty late at night. So I'm, I sprayed it in my garage. I'm going to hang out for five minutes. If my, if my dog would stop making noise. And uh, I'd hang out for a little bit, let it dry, tack up a little bit, and then I'm going to go hit it with some more paint just in a little bit. And then just continue doing light coats, let it dry, light coat, and eventually it'll be red. At that point, I'm going to leave the forward masking on and remove the masking from the drop bed because I actually want the bed that is all green right here to end up black. So this is the Proline Cliffhanger sticker sheet. It's got some pretty cool details on here and uh, there are a couple differences uh, between like the grills and the tail lights. So if I can peel up this edge right here um, and they are marked which ones are clear and which ones are not. So yeah, as you peel that up, you can see the upper tail lights have a solid white print behind them. And then the lower tail lights are for clear because they also include Lexan buckets if you're gonna be running like LED lighting in these. I personally am not, although I did go clear with the headlights so I can put the clear headlights on it just to make them look like they're actually clear. Uh, I think that's just gonna be the style I'm gonna go with here. But uh, I like the sticker sheet, but come on, Proline, get a freaking vinyl cutter that can outline your designs that you guys have. Cutting these out with scissors and with an X-Acto knife is really painstaking. It's really annoying. Um, I would be happy to pay $2 more if you guys just vinyl cut all this because the machine can do it way easier than I can. 
All right, back to watching paint dry. Okay, I have used this red before on my Wendigo. I did the whole nose of it, and it's still transparent even though I did quite a few coats on that Wendigo. This truck is showing the exact same thing. So this red just doesn't like coat and make it opaque like it really should. So I'm gonna do an experiment here. Instead of backing this with black by spraying the drop bed here, it's inherently going to get overspray all over the back of the bed. Before I paint this black, I'm going to back this in white to hopefully make that red really pop and make it bright. Uh, so it's gonna be red, then white, and then I'm gonna pull the tape off of the bed and then do black. So when you pull the body off, it's going to look black underneath, but there will be a white layer in between, hopefully to kind of secure some of this bright red color and uh, really bring it to life. So that's something I'm gonna try. We're gonna see how it turns out in the end. Got the pup taking the nap while I'm painting my truck. Okay, update. Got the white under the red, and then I also peeled off the masking for the drop bed. Uh, the white really made this pop. It looks like a nice, brilliant red, and it looks really good, actually. I'm really glad that I did that. So I'm curious to see, like, uh, now that I've done it white, once I paint it black, will it have any effect on the red? I kind of doubt it. I think the white's going to block whatever darkness comes from the black. Um, I don't think I'm going to, like, intentionally coat all of this black, just mainly spraying the bed, but the main surrounding area of the bed is where it's white, so it's obviously going to get a lot of overspray. So lines turned out decent, not so bad, not perfect, but pretty happy with it overall. I like where the masking ended up though. Uh, it looks like a proper bed, like you'd have the top edge of the tailgate painted and then the top bed rails painted and then just the base of the cab under the window. That was honestly just to make it easier so I didn't have another masking line between two colors right there. I think this will just be cleaner once I pop the window decal off. Uh, I think it'll clean things up very nicely. So time to go spray some black in the bed and see what happens. All right, here we are next day. And I can say that uh, I'm actually liking how last night's work turned out. So we've got more masking done. Going to do the yellow stripe in the front, orange stripe in the middle, because that's how it goes. And I also added an offset hood stripe, which is a very classic Toyota styling there. And then I've tried to mirror it as best as possible on the passenger side as well. Um, the tape lines aren't perfect, but the original red lines weren't perfect. And uh, it's just proof that I did it. So whatever, it's all good. There's going to be some mistakes in there, but I'm going to do my best to make it as pretty as possible. Uh, so far, we're on the, white tra the right track. Speaking of white, here is the next color we're going to spray. We're going to spray the whole thing white, and then we're going to remove our forward stripe, which is going to turn into yellow both on the hood and both sides, get those spray painted yellow, then do the orange and then back it all with white one more time to try and make that color pop. The bottom side of the bed to, did turn out all black, which I'm gonna leave for the most part as much as I can because when the truck is articulating and driving out on the rocks, I actually want the bottom of this to look black and not white. So it'll look a little bit better doing that. So just unmasked where I'm gonna do yellow on the nose as well as the sides. Um, I used a razor blade to kind of scratch back at some of the bleed marks on the paint job. You can do that. I mean, it's pretty simple. You just get on the inside of the body and just kind of scratch away the paint that bled a little bit. And that'll help clean up your lines a little bit. Uh, I did end up with some overspray in just a couple little spots, nothing too major. Um, something I probably ought to focus on myself is just making sure I take my time and I am patient and do a couple light coats, just like I've done to the rest of the truck even for these small areas. So like, obviously you wanna just kinda of get it done at this point, but I gotta try and take my time and uh, make sure that it comes out quality like the rest of it has so far. Um, the windows are, still have masks on them. They're just white and they also match the paint job. I did not paint the windows, so they will be clear in the end. But looking forward to it. We're gonna spray yellow because it's the lighter color and then orange and then red. So we're working our way from lightest to darkest. All right, guys, we've got the nose looking nice and good here. Just got that last piece to paint red, which means that the sides are their official color, and this is exactly how they're going to look. I have backed everything in white. So what I did for the yellow stripes, I painted them yellow. It took me about three coats, maybe four, and then I backed that in white before peeling the mask off for the orange, painted it orange, 
backed it in white, and then I am going to paint this in red and then back it in white. So every individual color I backed in white just to make sure that the orange didn't try and bleed through the yellow and change the color of it. It took a lot of time, but when you're just doing the backing coat, I spray pretty heavy. I don't do multiple coats. I just try and keep it as light as possible, but just make sure it fills up all the paint as well as the overspray of the red and the orange. For the most part, I tried to cover back up with white so it's nice and clean looking underneath. Again, I'm going to peel that off, paint it red. At that point, we're ready to take the overspray film off, and I'm thinking uh, I got some pretty bad overspray on the inside of the body, but we're going to find out when I peel that off. I think that's going to be the major flaw on this truck is just the overspray that I got on the truck, not intentionally. But the lines on the bed turned out super clean. The lines on the stripes turned out pretty clean. Once you peel this film off, it's going to be all nice and shiny, and then I intend to put all my stickers on it, which I got all my stickers out. Just kind of planning and seeing what I've got, and then I'm going to matte clear the whole thing. Well, all right, guys, we've got all of our paintwork laid down at this point. We need to go ahead and remove the mask from the windows, as well as remove that protective film from around the body. This is actually like my favorite part of the paint jobs, is when you get to remove the masks, as well as I really like when you get to peel off the uh, protective film there and see just how clean things turned out. Now, as I mentioned, I am not the painting expert, so I don't know how long you're supposed to wait for this, but this has been a few hours because I had a few things to do after I painted this truck. And you can see even after I painted the stripes on the hood and the sides there, I backed everything in white once more. Here we go, windows are looking pretty good from the outside. I think the mask did their job very well, so thanks for the pre-cut mask there, Proline. Now, here we go, ultimate reveal here. This usually takes just a little bit of work and I end up kind of just scratching one of the corners till the uh, protective film pops up. You can see the overspray on this back corner of the fender from the black. The majority of that should go right away. There we go. Way cleaner. Looks good now. This is where I'm very curious how things turned out. I'm afraid that I got quite a bit of overspray under the paint. So this is where we're going to find out if I messed that up or not. And, yep, this paint job got ruined by that overspray on the nose. But, you know, it kind of looks like it's dirty. Once it gets scratched up, it's going to blend right in. So I'm not going to, like, concern myself with that too much. It's already painted, and there's no fixing that. So outside of the dirty nose on the front of it, which sucks because that's, like, the face of the truck. A little bit of overspray here and there, and up front. There she is. Overall though, for what I know I'm capable of, I know that I do shit like that, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, particularly that bed. That black on red combo really just makes it pop. At last, we have finally made it to the completed, painted, stickered, matte clear, TRG Stripe Iron Man paint scheme. And overall guys, I'm giving this one a solid like eight and a half out of 10 for myself. Obviously the front end getting a little messed up with the, the masking and the black right there. Overall, not that bad. Like it can almost pass as like the truck is dirty from driving off road or something. There's a little peek at the uh, G-Speed project I've got going on. These are not the wheels and tires that are going on it. And these are not the links that are going on it. They may have different shocks in a future video. I don't know, the truck's still heavily under progress right there. But uh, we just got the body finished up for it, which is a big piece of this. So now I've got to figure out where my wheelbase is going to end up. I have not installed my hardcore RC links just yet, which is why I did not drill the body post holes first. Um, I want to make sure I know where my axles are going to end up, and then I can position the body kind of how I want. I'm not going to run it crazy slammed. Um, 
I'm just gonna sit on the chassis rails as low as I can get it, but I'm not gonna be like cutting through the hood to get the shock towers to come through. Um, personally, I've never done that, so I just don't wanna ruin all this hard work that I just put into this body with painting it all up. But I'll give you guys a quick 360 view of the uh, truck here. With the cliffhanger, added the tail lights, did the tailgate handle. The tail lights were painted solid behind them, so this is the solid sticker. Upper brake light, axial element, West Desert Wheeler, Hardcore RC, KNK Hardware. Left side did the little uh, EFI four wheel drive. It says Proline on the top, but this is very reminiscent of the old uh, like SR5 badges off like a 1986 Toyota pickup. Axial, G Speed, Savix, Hardcore RC. And then this is like the original Iron Man truck. They had BF Goodrich in black across the fender right here, but these stickers fit better up on top of the fenders. Um, they're not quite the correct white, but that's all right. Uh, just kind of a little homage to the Iron Man truck there. Proline grill with clear headlights. Not gonna do the buckets. Mm, I don't think I'm gonna put lights in this one, um, but I do have the buckets still. But overall, this is probably the best paint job I've ever done. I'm pretty damn happy with it. Uh, I think my Phoenix might have this one beat, but uh, definitely one of my favorites right here. Went full matte on the outside, did matte on the inside of the windshield as well as the outside to really get that glass fogged up. Um, I like having clear windows, but I don't like staring at my transmission in there. So that's why I fog them all up. And then the matte white and the outside kind of helps hide scratches. If the whole thing is like super shiny and pretty, and then you just have like a big gouge down the side of your door, it's very noticeable. But if the whole thing is not shiny, then a little scratch here and there show up less. Um, and I found with lighter colors, like white, yellow, orange, and red, um, the scratches don't show as bad on a matte color. However, with my green and black Capra, both of those are dark colors, and that thing looked like it was beat to hell after like day two. So I don't recommend dark colors and matte colors. But uh, here's another truck I sprayed with matte. Did the orange hood, side panels. Um, I did not matte over this sticker, I did matte this sticker, and that's one key part of this paint job is I put all my stickers on beforehand before spraying it because I feel like that extra matte clear on top of there kind of adds a layer to help hold the stickers to the truck as well as it makes it all a satin finish so you don't have like a big bright shiny sticker on the side and then the rest of the truck is matte finish including the door handles and headlights and taillights, those are all clear, those are all matte cleared. Um, the only sticker missing off of this is from my local hobby shop, Sky RC, and I will be sure to leave a link to their Facebook group down below because Sky RC helped me out a ton with this project, with the G-Speed chassis, the cliffhanger body, the paint, the tires, the wheels, so much of this is going to be sourced from Sky RC, so definitely check those guys out in St. George, Utah, awesome hobby shop, that's where I get 98% of the parts that I get. Um, anything he doesn't have that I gotta get, I'll go through my affiliate link on A Main Hobbies, which I will also have a link for down below. So if you want to help support my channel directly, you can do that. If you guys are in the area in Southern Utah, be sure to stop by and say what's up to Cody over at Sky RC. Until next time, guys, I greatly appreciate you watching. Please drop a comment if this was helpful in any way, or if you think it was a total shit show, dumpster fire, that's totally all right too. Um, like I said, I am not the expert, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It's not perfect, but that's proof that I did it. Okay, guys. Until next time, keep the rubber side down.